So continuing my uh, videos on polycystic ovarian syndrome, let's understand what causes polycystic ovarian syndrome. So on the contrary belief that uh, we don't really know why someone has a polycystic ovarian syndrome, uh, the world recently, not recently, the world had identified there are so many contributing factors and I'm going to list the most important factors which can influence a woman's development of polycystic ovarian syndrome and the first and the most, most, most important one is insulin resistance. So you must have all heard about how important insulin hormone is um, for the body, right? Insulin is a hormone which is secreted by the pancreas, that is an organ in the body, which helps breakdown of sugars, that is carbohydrates, proteins, fats, the metabolism of carbohydrates, proteins and fats. Now let's say you eat something, you eat a meal, right? There is carbohydrates, there are proteins and there are fats in that meal. So your carbohydrates need to get digested, need to get broken down into smaller, simpler sugars. And insulin does this for you. Insulin breaks down your carbohydrates or the sugars and makes them available for absorption by different parts of the body, different organs of the body. Now, uh, I emphasize a lot on insulin sensitivity because insulin is like the most important hormone and every organ in the body is directly or indirectly dependent on the action of insulin. Now, recently in my OP, I've actually seen a very interesting uh, case. A young girl in her early 20s comes to me, says, ma'am, I have a urinary tract infection, I suppose. I don't know, I've been getting this for a while, very frequently over the last six months. Then uh, I just ordered a couple of tests and do a scan. Um, but before that, before I give you the details of the uh, scan, I would want to describe the girl. She is in her mid 20s, early 20s, um, a little bit on the overweight side, according to the height. Uh, she, she's a little overweight. Her lifestyle is pretty sedentary. There is no much of physical activity incorporated uh, in the routine. Uh, she's mostly in her night shifts. So uh, sleep is like haywire and haphazard. Uh, now going back to the investigations, I've done a scan for her um, to identify if there are any problems uh, in the scan. And I found out that she has polycystic ovarian syndrome, along with certain changes in the bladder, which are consistent with current urinary tract infections. Now I go back and ask her, do you have any issues with your periods? She says to me, no ma'am, my periods are like a clockwork. I never had any issues with my periods. My periods are all fine. Now then she is surprised with the scan report of polycystic ovarian syndrome and asks me, ma'am, I don't have any problem with my periods. Then why are my ovaries polycystic? Is that going to be a problem? Then I, 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 think the, I think the report is wrong. Well, it doesn't usually work that way. The report may not be wrong. So now you remember her characteristics, remember the way she looked and all. All of that is signs and symptoms of insulin resistance. That is the overweight, the stress, the sleeplessness, the sedentary lifestyle, uh, the absence of physical activity. Uh, all of these contribute to what is called as insulin resistance. Now, if your insulin is resistant to its job, there are so many other um, functions of the insulin which also go haywire. Now, your body is actually persisting that insulin resistance as lack of insulin. That is, it's thinking, oh, the insulin is not acting. So, which means we need to produce more and more insulin and pushing you into a state of what is called as hyperinsulinemia. So the more amount of insulin in your body, the drastic effects of insulin come up and that's how your PCOS actually develops. Now what came first? Is it the PCOS which contributed to insulin resistance or the insulin resistance which contributed to PCOS? It's like a chicken and egg kind of a scenario here. We really don't know what came first, right? Coming to the second most important cause of PCOS or, you know, contributing factor of PCOS is excess androgens. We are girls, right? Then why am I talking about androgens in a girl? Our body, in spite of being women, we produce androgens. We produce androgens in the ovaries, we produce androgens in the adrenals. Now, these androgens are also very important for certain metabolic functions in the body. But excess androgens is what causes peripheral cysts or polycysts in the ovaries. They kind of disturb the balance sink, they kind of disturb the menstrual cycle and cause symptoms and signs of polycystic ovarian syndrome. The third and the most other important contributing factor is a combination of genetics with PCOS. See, we are what our genetics are. So if you happen to have a combination that is going to give you PCOS, you hit a bingo you will have PCOS. And we can't really determine who has PCOS based on the genetics. We don't extensively study genetics and PCOS, but yes, that is also a contributing factor. The fourth and another really, really important factor, which the whole world is talking about, is low-grade inflammation. 
Now imagine you are in a party, you are at a party uh, and then you hear this continuous uh, humming from a malfunction speaker. Uh, it's not so loud enough to crash the party, but it's kind of there to get your attention. So chronic low grade inflammation is also similar to that. It's just there in your body, giving certain signs and symptoms, but not severe enough for you to identify and change your methods or change your lifestyle. So chronic low grade inflammation is also a contributing factor for polycystic ovarian syndrome. So I think I've de deal with, dealt with all the important contributing factors of polycystic ovarian syndrome. So if you are interested in this thread, why don't you watch the next video where I talk about all of the PCOS shenanigans, all of the hormonal imbalances and I'm Dr. Santoshi Nandigam, consultant obstetrician and gynecologist. I'm going to talk about women's health, pregnancy, childbirth, anything and everything in the world. And subscribe to my YouTube channel for empowering women content. Thank you very much.